Welcome back in live to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We are starting our 2022 NFL Draft Prospects Power Rankings. We've done a few mock drafts kind of to talk about prospects. We are going to start today solidifying, not really solidifying, but getting into who we rank at what spot um, for each position group. This is obviously subject to change after we get more film in, more measurables in. Some guys might declare, some guys might stay back and go to school for another year. So this is kind of just, just starting our Excel sheet, and we thought we'd give you guys a little insight on what we're thinking. We're going to start with the offensive tackle position, a position that I think is really top heavy. I've been extremely impressed with some of the top prospects um, from that offensive tackle position. And it definitely does not, it definitely gets weaker as you go um, down those lists. I think we can start with the first prospect we'll talk about in my notes, Evan Neal um, from Alabama. He's an absolute mountain of a man. Um, Dill, is, is that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you kick it off because I know you watched a lot of Evan Neal. Um, is he your number one prospect still too? Yeah, and I, I think this is – I actually think it's pretty close. I am a huge Charles Cross fan. I've, I've, I think it's him – him and Neil are both one and two. Then you take a bit of a step down in kind of draft prospect in my mind. But Evan Neal, just that size – I mean, you know he's going to be a very good run blocker. He is a very good run blocker now in college. And I think something like I underrate personally is when you're 6'7", 350, you don't need to be like the athlete Charles Cross needs to be. Yes. And I don't yeah. think Evan Neal is. He's not as smooth. He doesn't have as good a feet. But given his length and his weight and strength, he doesn't need to have that same – like perfect technique kind of in his past his past pro form to be really good and, and he's just been really dominant he's been shutting guys down and, and really not giving up a whole lot in the past so yeah and my from what I've seen from him a little bit kind of echoing what you said he's definitely not as smooth as Charles Cross who we'll get to in a little bit we're both kind of in love with this kid but he's just so big um he kind of Kind of reminds me of like a Trent Williams, um, Trent Brown kind of offensive tackle where, yeah, you're not like the smoothest because you're six, seven, 350 pounds, but you don't need to be. Um, absolutely mauls guys in the run game too. So get behind him uh, in the run game. Alabama love to run to that, to that side. Get behind Evan Neal and he, he absolutely just moves bodies. I think he's a top three prospect overall. Um, I think a team like the Jets, if they could get him and add him to that offensive line, that's just really struggled. Um, I think that'd be a great get. The Giants would be another great fit. I know they need help. That being said, he might go as high as two to the Jaguars, um, who who really need some help on that offensive line too. Um, but overall, Evan Neal is a phenomenal prospect. We'll kind of get into more of his like film breakdown as the process goes, but I think – the Rock Boys definitely are um, agreeing with the consensus as, as Evan Neal is OT1. Um, yeah. We'll get to our second prospect. Let's let's throw out Charles Cross. I think we both agree he's he's kind of jumped at Kamakwanu in the uh, in the rankings. At least he has for my for me. Uh, I was extremely impressed with his film. Definitely, Dilts. Can you give me his measurables real quick? So I'm gonna go ahead and five, throw him three, ten pounds. Uh, what was that? Six, six five three ten. Yeah. Um, but uh, Charles Cross, yes, gives up forty pounds to Evan Neal. Gives up a little length, but he more than makes up with it with how smooth he is in pass protection. With that air raid offense that Mike Leach runs, uh, Charles Cross has has gotten a lot of work in pass protection. And you you worry about his anchor, right? Oh, three hundred ten pounds. That's relatively small. I think he played as, as a true freshman at, at under 300. I think he was around 295. Um, definitely has added weight to the frame. I think he could afford, if he could, to add a little bit more, but it definitely doesn't need to because he's phenomenal at just mirroring guys. And I just feel like he's always just squared up on dudes and, and they don't really beat him, specifically in that Alabama game. 
I mean, they were leaving him on some islands against some extremely good edge rushers, Will Anderson being one of them for a lot of those reps, and was locking them up pretty good. Um, and, I yeah, was, and, and what he does well is he uses his hands or his hands, and he maximizes what he has in terms of his length. Like he doesn't let guys get their hands on him without putting his hands on him first, kind of, and, and does a good job keeping some extension and not allowing people to get into him and move him around because he really doesn't have a problem getting bull rushed even at the weight, which I, I think like people are crazy. Like what's three ten isn't like, you're not like a small offensive lineman in my mind. Yeah. No, like, I think that than, than like the Evan Neal's of the world, but I don't, I mean, if you can be as athletic as him and, and use the technique he, he does and, and essentially like maximize your length at that, size like you, I think it's no problem in terms of like can this guy play tackle in the pros yeah and I think for a lot of teams who do like to throw the ball more a Charles Cross who has 500 plus snaps and pass pro um, throughout his career is, is somebody that you're really you're really looking at <laughs> Um, as far as in the run game, definitely not as, as uh, a big and physical as an Evan Neal or as a, a Kamakwanu. But he wasn't really asked to do it much in that Mississippi State um, offense. They really run the ball to switch it up from the pass as opposed to Alabama, NC State. They more like to run the ball and then to, to set up the pass. Um, so we don't have as much film, nor as he was, nor was he that impressive in run blocking as some of these other prospects. But in pass protection, he's absolutely nails. Um, extremely yeah. impressed with him. I and I, I wouldn't call it like a liability either, though. No, no, it's no. not like it doesn't jump off to me. Like, well, no. that was brutal. It's like, yeah, he's not a mall like a kind of your like Orlando Pace Mauler type guy, but. Again, I don't think that's wildly important. If you can just be solid enough and then be nails in the pass game, like uh, that, you that's a pretty good combo to be a yeah. high pick. And again, he's like athletic enough and super good, athlete. good enough where you should be able to develop him into a not like again, he's not going to be like your all world run blocking guy, but I'm sure he'll be good enough in the pros. And that's and that. In my mind, him in a Kamakwanu, I kind of have as 2A, 2B. Evan Neal, I think, is a clear OT1. Oh, see, I disagree. I would I would have it closer to, like, 1A, 1B, and your Charles Cross, Evan Neal. And then, oh, interesting. Yeah, I think you're you're right much higher right. than Charles Cross. I don't think, I think he's right with him. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's like that. I, I think if you took Charles Cross in, like, the 5 to – 10 range I don't think you're like crazy to do that oh I, th I think he's a top 10 pick I don't know if he's a top five pick like I think Evan Neal is yeah I mean that that could be true I don't I don't know I mean it, I get it that on, it depends on the scheme the what what offense you want to run I mean the Baltimore Ravens Tennessee Titans kind of more of that downhill uh run game I could see why you would go with Kevin Kwan over Charles Cross because that's what you want to do if you're more of a spread it out air raid, leave your tackles on islands, blocking really good edge pass rushers. Um, I'm going with Charles Cross. I think he's maybe like if you're the Buffalo Bills are picking there, you want to, you want to pick a tackle who's nails and pass pro because you're throwing the ball so much. Um, yeah. So I think Charles Cross can offer you better play in that position. Uh, with that being said, let's move on to three. Uh, do you have a chemical on your three too? <laughs> Yeah, I think I, to me it's pretty clear. Like those three, I think are all first rounders. The chem may be a little at the back end of the first. No, but I think the chem requirement is not back, at, but I mean like mid middle of the first. I, I would definitely you, go. He's a top counter. Yeah, I think I would if so. If a team drafted him, and if the Giants or Jets ended up with a chem requirement, I've I've said this with multiple fans that have engaged with on Twitter. That's a good constellation prize for having you. Um, thinking about the Jets and Giants who want to show up and get, get a guy who's, who's solid and pass pro and obviously can, can establish that run and Kevin Kwan is your guy. Uh, do, what are his measurables? I mean, he's a, he's also a mound of a man. So. Uh, he's six four, three hundred twenty 320 pounds. So yeah, little, little short. He, he was a guy who kicked out. He said 325. 20, but yeah. 20. 20. Yeah. Um, 
he was a guy who played guard for a decent amount of his career, not this year, but last year, they kicked him out the tackle, held his own. And, and this year, I think a lot of people going into the year still had him as a guard. He's clearly showed he's, he's a tackle, um, maybe a right tackle to start, see how he does. But I mean, he's, he's, he's pretty solid in space. What have you seen from, from the film that you've seen at the camp? Yeah. I mean, the, I think probably what he's really going to be a dominant player in is like just gap scheme run down blocking and moving guys mm-hmm. i think he's a little less suited frankly for the zone run i think he's not as good in like out in space i think he I, rock I on as didn't well. think that was, i thought he got going out in space uh at a decent level they pulled it while i was watching florida state and they pulled him from that left tackle spot all the way over as a lead blocker um on a stretch play to the right and, and he got out there um I was impressed with how athletic he was. I don't know about, like, A, pulling. You don't really pull much in zones, uh, zone running. But to me, I thought the zone scheme I don't think would fit him as well as that down blocking, pulling scheme where you're blocking. And and that's mainly not like he can't do zone blocking, but he's, I thought, could really move people. Yeah, uh, he's getting going. He was just base uh, square, fitting him up and, and kind of down blocking instead of that more athletic, uh, smaller, smaller, yeah, catch guys and moving targets kind of thing. He's a guy who um, I'm interested to see what his arms come in to. Not that I'm like a super arm length analytics nerd. Miles Murphy was able to kind of kind of get into his body um, a decent amount uh, against Clemson. Granted, Miles Murphy, I think, will be a first-round pick in next year's draft when he's eligible. But that is the the worst game of film I saw him have was was against Clemson, and he was very very good in the run. What was happening is is Miles Murphy kind of got after him a little bit in pass pro, got a sack on Devin Leary at one point. Um, but I like his game. I think he's uh again kind of echoing what you said. The scheme, the type of offense you want to run, kind of depends on who you're taking um, between. Yeah, and, and, and to me, it didn't seem like he had a problem in general with the length. Again, I think what Charles Cross does, they just do a good job kind of establishing their hand placement early and just not letting – not like being a catcher. Like, I mean, for example, you watch like a Zion Nelson, for whatever reason, he's catching guys now and he's – not getting his hands on people and, and he struggled mightily. It was, it was kind of an odd year for him. I thought he so was while we're talking about Zion. What are your thoughts on him? I know you've told me you think he should go to school. <clears throat> I yeah, I think he's I almost think he makes sense for him to stay one more year because it's like I you still see the potential to be a top top end offensive tackle in terms of how you athletic had high going in the year. Yeah, I would have thought he was number one personally. Um well, that's crazy, but it was like a weird year for him. No, I don't think it was crazy from last year. I mean, he him or Cross, was the guy who me and you we were watching that game together when they trotted him out at left tackle against Florida. Um, back when Florida had some, well, they still do, but they had um, I'm blanking on their names with some some Ziggy. Um, uh, they had two really good edge defenders. Yeah, there was they started out Zion Nelson as a true freshman who weighed 290 pounds. He played tight end in high school. Um, and you could tell he was carrying, he put on some weight, but it like it wasn't very comfortable weight. And he I think he gave up like four sacks. He he absolutely got dog walked. Um, definitely had some growing pains that freshman year. And then the sophomore year looked a lot better. And I think a lot of those first round projections going into the year this year were projections of we're going to see you take another step like you took that's from that freshman sophomore year uh and as you kind of said you just don't see this you just didn't well it's like the opposite it's like he he's got long arms he is tall he is very athletic and feeling is so high yeah it's so high. And, and i think you still saw the athleticism out of him but like not being powerful in the run game and the big it just like not getting your hands on anybody so just like you're just catching everything and and yeah. again i thought his feet were he looked decent and it's just that once like a jermaine johnson like you have to use your hands because that's a strong long oh, yeah. rush kind of first power rusher and he he was really feeding them and 
Mm-hmm. I don't. I almost think he should just go back to school. It's like now you can. And it makes a lot of sense. You just got Mario Cristobal, who's who's kind yeah. of um, oh, with the offensive line, but has is noted for developing uh, some really strong offensive line play. Uh, it, it makes a lot of sense, and they're a decent team. Who I know they want to kind of get something going, bring the U back. So if he's really bought into that, it, it'd make a lot of sense for him. Plus yeah. the NIL in Miami. I mean, those players are making some some good dough. You can get there. we can get paid a little bit at least. Um, let's let's go to a guy that we have really liked when we've been texting each other about these prospects. A lot of guys see this guy as an offensive guard, Kenyon Green out of Texas A and M. Uh, what are your thoughts on him? I don't know if you see. I know we've both watched some film on him. I like him as a tackle. See, that's the game I kind of watched was that Bama game. And I thought, again, a similar to Aquanu, like maybe when you look at him, you don't think, oh, tackle, like more of a guard body. Yeah, so I worry about the line. Stockier and whatnot. But, again, a guy who's athletic enough, and, and I personally think he probably does stay at guard. I don't think he is as athletic as Aquanu. And, but it's – I don't know. You his measurables when you get a chance? Uh, yeah, I can get him. I didn't. Um, for, I watched Kenny Green against Alabama, and I watched him against Auburn, and I thought he, I mean, he's uh, he struggled the first couple of possessions against Auburn, and then really got it going. He's solid in pass pro. He's a very very good run blocker. Kind of definitely shows some more guard traits. But when you're a prospect, thinking about where you're gonna end up, I remember Boogie Basham in a very similar situation last year getting some projections to kick inside and play defensive tackle. Where's the money at? The money's playing on the edge. The money's playing offensive tackle. And so if you can play offensive tackle at a high level, which he clearly can, he played some really good SEC defenses and did very, very well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he ends up staying at tackle, maybe just the right tackle. I know I worry about those arm lengths. What, what's his, what's his height coming at? Six four three twenty five. 325. So so, similar so very size. similar build to to a cam. And you're right, probably not quite the athlete. You said 325? Five. 325. Um, he's also him and a Kenny Green and Kamakwanu got some nasty in them. Uh, they they like to finish those blocks. They, they if if they're uh, getting into a guy, they like to to make sure that other guy knows. And I know a lot of a lot of NFL teams like that type of attitude uh, on the O line. So yeah, I, I, I have him. Are we? He's tentatively a tackle. I'm putting him in a tackle right now until the process keeps going. We'll see what those arms come. My in. opinion on that is like if you trotted him out today, he's probably a better tackle than like uh, Sean Ryan, who I think I would say was my kind of after that group of four, uh, three is kind yep. of my next guy. I think. Sean Ryan to me is like a more athletic version of Darian Kennard. And I don't think Sean Ryan's played like wildly consistent. I think he did struggle quite a bit. Is that the strong right there? Yeah. But and give me his measurables. Uh he is six five, three hundred and twenty pounds. So he's got the length. I think he's got a like a solid build, a little a little stockier than Charles Cross, obviously. Um but I, what I think he, he is, and I wish UCLA ran more of a power run scheme because I'd be interested to see a little more of it because I think you see some strength and some power in, in his game. Uh, UCLA plays a lot on the edge, obviously. That's like their run game is that zone stretch kind of thing, which I thought he did a good job on. And what I'm – by the way, it's Ryan with an E, not a U. But, uh, not you? Okay. I knew he spelled it a little, a little interesting. Yeah. I haven't watched, so I haven't watched any of this kid really. Um, I've heard good things, and and you're echoing some of those things. Well, he is I, like a project to me. It's like I don't think again, like when watching square up against Kayvon from Oregon. Yeah, like he had his problems, but like obviously Kayvon was given anybody problems. Really, it's a yeah. really good player. But I think we, I, I see as the bit like he can move his feet not like uh take a darian canard who who you see talk about him next yeah and i'm just like 
because that's my comparison kind of. I think Sean Ryan kind of is probably going to be a right tackle. I think he could be a left, but he'll probably start on the right. So I'm going to put I'm going to put to the the last two guys I want to talk about. I'm not even going to put in really their information yet because I don't really know where I want to put them. Um, yeah. Darian Kennard and Jackson Kirkland. And this is kind of what we'll, we'll round out the video with these guys because these are really the only prospects that I've seen. Um, Darian Kennard's been a guy I've loved for the last two, three years. He's graded super high on uh, PFF for le- legitimately years. I thought he'd maybe declare last year. He ended up coming back. My problem with him is he's just – He's just choppy. Uh, he's, he's a pure guard in my uh, mind. Yeah. He, I, I, lumbering steps when he tries to get into pass sets and struggles. struggles watching against pass. Georgia, he had like lots of problems. And I think he had some problems in the run game too, which was like a little. Yeah. Definitely don't want to see I that. Mean, he's he's a guy who traditionally is, is extremely good in the run. And well, I like very good for yeah. Kentucky for a while because Kentucky loves to to definitely get downhill with their running backs and their offensive linemen. Um, but yeah, I just, I struggle to see him. He, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and put him in guard because he's, he's not playing tackle in the NFL. Uh, I think, I think some of those like speedier, lengthier um, edge guys, they'll have, they'll have his way with uh, Kennard. And- well, yeah, he's already, I think he's having his problems with them. I think that's two ends, by the way. It's two ends. Um, so, I think he comes in at like 350, but only like 6'5, so he's really meaty. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I think he's more of a guard, uh, but a good guard. Like, I, I like him at guard. I think he's like a, a day two pick, an early day two pick. I don't know if he's in the first round, um, especially if Kenny Green's more seen as a guard, because I think Kenny Green's a, a higher, better prospect at guard than Kennard is, but Kennard's right up there. Um, and when we, we get into more of our offensive guards, um, I think I think I'm really gonna like him, and pretty, he'll probably be in my top three. Uh, but I just don't see him at tackle. And yeah, I don't either. Jackson Kirkland is is in my opinion just not good. Tough year for him, I think. He was horrible, dude. He was so bad against Michigan. I was like, I was excited to see like, oh, him and Hutch, like they're gonna go at it. And Hutch well, I get Hutch beaten him a couple times, but he beat him every time. Every time they lined up, yeah, Hotch, I'd say was. I think Kirkland is he's like six eight, I think, but only three ten. And people just he gives up all that leverage being that tall, and people just get up into his body and they just drive him back. I mean, he's got no anchor. And he's not even like a great athlete either at that. Oh, he didn't know, and he doesn't use length that well. He doesn't get his hands on guys early, um, and he's yeah. just. I mean, Hotch literally walked him back into the quarterback numerous times. Um, and a job will beat him off the edge. So it's like, okay, you can't get back there. You get beat through you. You're getting beat around you. And I, I don't mean to like crucify the dude on a, on a game that on the road against two of the top edge prospects in the class, but like you go see the film in the pac 12 and it's not that impressive either. Um, and you kind of look when you're evaluating these prospects, like how are they doing against NFL caliber talent? Pac 12 has a little bit less of that on the defense side of the ball. So you really put a lot of stock in how is he looking against a, a, a Michigan edge duo that that's NFL talent, uh, NFL caliber players. And I mean, he just didn't bring it. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, really I, people are kind of like wanting him to be good, but yeah, yeah, dude, I think that was it. Cause he was like talked about as a top 20 pick coming into the, into the season and just uh, he struggled, man. He really struggled. Uh, are there any other prospects you want to just jot down before we we uh, wrap up the show? Yeah, you know, I hate to be a homer, but I think Andrew Stuber is going to make his way up into being a very draftable player. Uh, probably not going to be like one through three, but Andrew again, guy who I think is going to come in and be a really good right tackle, like not really like a pro bowler type player, but who can probably be a really dependable right tackle for a long time is him. I think he's – And a depth guy. Like, yeah, I mean, and, and he can play guard too. So it's like getting a guy who is, what you said, reliable and consistent. I mean, there was very rarely games where he just was like didn't show up. I mean, Brian Hayes had a few, but – Well, you've also seen a big progression with him 
Uh, I and, think you go and, back to 28, 19 when it was either 18 or 19, but him versus Chase Young, I think like, yeah, Chase Young kind of exposed him and he was a younger right tackle at that point. And, but again, you've seen big, big improvements to what he's done this year is like never had, you never noticed him. Yeah. And it's like, and I mean, in the run game, he's had some dominant moments. So, yeah. And having, having a guy on that line who can play inside and he put him outside, we're kind of uh, more of a utility guy that, that means a lot, especially, I mean, like, it's a with, like COVID, but uh, that's not going to be a problem for years to come. But <laughs> offensive line, <laughs> offensive line, men, they get banged up. People roll up on knees. Um, to have to miss games and having a guy who I, you got to go play right tackle for us or play right guard for us uh, this year or the couple for a couple games and being reliable and a guy who's you can count on uh, Andrew Stuber's that guy. Uh, so I, I agree. Just uh, I, I don't know about like the ceiling. I mean, with- of course, like it's hard to not mention a Nicholas Petit Frere. I mean, I mean, really, until the Michigan game, you thought he was like kind of destined to be a first rounder. I yeah, I heard his stock. I don't. I, it's I, just the murdering, murdering really, offensive tackles draft stock. In into me, like Petit Frere, I don't need. I don't know that he was ever worth like kind of first round even talk. He doesn't. He's a guy who just doesn't get. I think he's athletic enough to be better than he is, but for whatever reason, he stops his feet early in his pass sets and. Like, yeah. guys were getting on his edge. Carl Aftis was giving him a hard time. It just I, – I didn't I'm see – I'm not filming on him besides – At least consistent yeah. play. Um, yeah. Again, like, yeah, he might have potential. He's got the bigger frame, long, tall. But I think I didn't – I didn't see, like, elite athleticism or particularly great consistency out of that – out of him for this year. Okay. Yeah. So you would definitely like I don't know him or Sean Ryan. You'd I'd probably have to like watch a little more, but he's a day twoer, I think. Uh, Saint yeah. uh, Pierre. I always want to call him Saint Pierre. Um, but yeah, that'll that'll round out our early offensive tackle ranks. Where again, we're just kind of starting to put guys uh, into a list. That we yeah, I almost to... see it as more of like a discussion. Because yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, so I didn't have him kind right. of finish it up i well, think there's three studs and then everybody else kind of fall yeah, their way in you know that's kind of what i said at the beginning of the show like this it's these three tackles i love like i, I love evan neal i love trust cross i love the kind of quantity. it's not like i don't like the other guys but i think those are three tackles for legitimate first like top 10 picks um and then it gets you might not see another offense tackle picked in the, in the rest of the round unless you kenny green's tackle um, but like, yeah, you know, or, I mean, like the Louisville that. guy obviously seems to be shooting up the boards, and yeah, um, I'm kind of, I haven't watched much of his game, but it's like yeah. there, I'm like, there's always late rising tackles. You kind of notice, yeah, guy's six five and he moves well, and okay, like give him more of a look, and then yeah, I don't know your Eric Fitch, Fishers of the world who just shoot up at the senior bowl. Like, so I'm sure there'll be some that's, shit. That's also I, – I also had uh, Penning, Trevor Penning noted uh, from Northern Iowa. He's a guy that I'm not even going to put on this document until I see him at the senior bowl. Uh, again, yeah. you play in SCS Town, like I'm not going to evaluate you. Um, yes, you're good. I watched the game. Like, he's good. He's very good. He looks fantastic. Um, that being said, like I want to see you go up against – a, a power five top hundred pick uh, working in the senior bowl. That's kind of how, how that kid from university of white Wisconsin, uh, whitewater, uh, Quinn Myers. He was a guy who he needed the senior bowl. You know what I mean? Like, um, had a phenomenal senior bowl and that's why it was a day two pick. Uh, Trevor Penning, he's kind of on that list yeah. so i'm not even going to talk to him and t- talk about him not that i disrespect him or disrespect the fcs football um you need a senior bowl of something it's need probably senior. hard to watch them or get a gauge okay. on them i think uh so that's kind of that's kind of where we're at now we'll be back next next episode i think we're gonna do our our top guards again we're just kind of introducing our favorite prospects at the offensive guard spot um and we might just move right across this document 
we're going to start highlighting like first round, second round um, names to kind of organize it a little bit better. But this is kind of a, an early discussion on some of the offensive tackles that, that we've liked um, going forward. Uh, so we appreciate you guys being there, uh, being here, I should say. And uh, we, and we're also going to be giving out some bull picks, obviously, stack some cash before we, uh, before we dip out on the college football season. So we'll be doing some previews for that too. Uh, once again, thank you guys for hanging out, and we'll be back. We'll be back early. We'll probably be back on the weekend doing some more prospect breakdowns. So until then, talk to y'all later. Peace.